May God bless America, our country, and this ship, and all who serve in her. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kushis. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General David Berger, Commanding General, 1st Marine Expeditionary Force. Thank you, and uh, good morning, Representative Rogers, Representative Amodi, Mayor Lee, the Honorable Secretary Mavis, and Secretary Stackley. General, Mrs. Pace, right behind me, and Tiffany, who's here, I know, Admiral Harris, all distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and most especially the captain and crew of the USS America, welcome. On behalf of General Lamus, who is our 35th Commandant of the Marine Corps, Congratulations on uh, getting to this point this morning. Together with the Chief of Naval Operations, General Lemus has been personally involved with making this ship a reality. As much as he and Bonnie, his wife, would have liked to have been here with us this morning, I want you to know they're busy packing up their household belongings in Washington, D.C., because next Friday he turns over the commandancy. I'm humbled to represent General Lemus here this morning. I'm pretty sure he would rather be here than packing up his uh, stuff back in Washington, D.C. and marking boxes. In November, Samuel Nicholas, who just happened to be our very first Commandant of the Marine Corps, he wrote a letter to Congress. He was in Philadelphia at the time, that's where he was stationed. And he asked Congress permission to lead the Marine Detachment that was going to be assigned to a U.S. Navy ship that was being built at the time. It was under construction. That ship was the America, the first America. For the past 235 years, Marines have sailed aboard U.S. Navy ships that sail from America and for America. Today's USS America, this, this great warship right behind us, this is the platform of the future. With her, we can respond faster to a crisis around the world with the right force at the right time. She can stay on station for longer periods of time. She can keep dozens of our very advanced aircraft up and flying. So why is all that important? Because the unmistakable presence of naval vessels loaded with Marines off the coast of a brewing crisis, that's what brings a sense of assurance to our allies and to our partners, and they believe that we are there to make sure that crisis will not worsen. All of us can leave here this morning at the end of this ceremony. We can get in our cars, drive home, knowing one thing is for sure. This ship, her crew, and the Marines aboard will keep our nation secure for decades to come. And as the USS America carries out her missions on distant seas, our responsibility, yours and mine, is to continue to honor the service of our nation's sons and daughters who wear our uniform and serve so proudly in our military, and thank them. Thank them sincerely for volunteering to stand the watch. May God grant the America fair fair winds and following seas. Thank you, and Semper Fidelis. Thank you, General Berger. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Sean Stackley, Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition. Mrs. Pace, Lynn, she's a beautiful ship. Very fitting. Very fitting. General Pace, Secretary Schultz, Secretary Mavis, Admiral Harris, General Berger, Mayor Lee, citizens of San Francisco, today, today we are all Giants fans. Today, we are all shipbuilders. Today, we are the sailors and Marines made welcome by your great city. Today, we are America, and what a great day today is. It began 
as a bold and magnificent dream. And it was defined for all mankind, for all time, by those words left to us by Thomas Jefferson. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. And it would become, as Abraham Lincoln foretold, the last best hope of Earth. And it would take on the mantle and still remains, as Franklin Roosevelt urged, the great arsenal of democracy. And today, today it is, as Ronald Reagan would oft remind us, the shining city upon a hill, America. The history of this great land is the history of opportunity and promise. It is the history of freedom itself. And throughout its history, throughout our history, that opportunity, that promise, that freedom, these have been preserved, these have been defended by the young men and women, sailors and Marines, who sail far from our shores, who sacrifice and gladly sacrifice so that we here in America may continue to enjoy those freedoms we cherish so deeply. Who are these heroes standing in ranks before us? They come from all walks of life, from every corner of the country, from the mountainous countryside surrounding Gunny Sergeant Trevor Bates' hometown of Idaho Falls, to the quiet Long Island hamlet of Ridge, New York, where air traffic controlman Kevin Kennelly first raised his right hand and swore that most solemn oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. From Madison, Wisconsin, a thousand miles from the sea, yet where it remains true, even a thousand miles from the sea, that we are a maritime nation, and where aviation technician, second class Zoe Nelson, would begin her long journey bringing her to this day, to this place, this ship and crew, to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, where Aviation Ordnance First Class Christina Broadcorb would leave behind her family, her home, and two, her beloved Crimson Tide, to be a part of something big, very big. Roll, Tide, roll, Christina from the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, to the freeways of Los Angeles. Master Sergeant Jesse Ramirez, an information technician, second class, Alan Shee, held but one thing in common before they became shipmates, the desire to serve our country. So too, Seaman Apprentice Yan Chen, who has made perhaps the longest journey, a journey which began in China and San Francisco's own native son, Landing Signalman First Class, Anthony Solis. In all, 1,204 crew members from every corner of this land. They're well-educated, well-trained, dedicated. These are your heroes. This is your America. And today, today, they are well-armed. You've heard told of the marvels of this great warship. Tons of steel, enough cable and pipe to stretch from San Diego to Portland, two acres of flight deck, range and power, armor, ammunition, vehicles, and supplies designed to carry into battle the most advanced combat aircraft in the world, designed to carry into battle 1,700 Marines who will sail with this ship into harm's way and two, designed to provide aid, to relieve suffering, and provide hope to those in need. It is the envy of all the world, and it was designed and built right here in America. 
by, yes, heroes. Heroes like Randy Padgett, John Wilson, Harry Rucker, George Jones, and the many skilled craftsmen of Ingle Shipyard. And Navy designers and supervisors like Fred Hoffmeyer, Hal Lamb, Commanders Cedric McNeil and John Letourneau, Lieutenant Tabitha Booth, and Michael Arnold. All under the able leadership of Captain Chris Mercer. They, too, are the envy of the world. We here today understand ours is a freedom which is not a God-given right. It comes with great burden and sacrifice. And so it is today that 85,000 sailors and Marines are deployed, providing security on every continent, every ocean, every sea, soon to be joined, soon to be made more strong by this ship and crew. The skipper, officers and crew who proudly call yourself the America, always keep in mind that when you sail, where you sail, America sails. And upon America rests the opportunity, the promise, the freedom, the hopes of all the world. It began as a bold and magnificent dream. Godspeed, America. God bless these United States. Thank you, Secretary Stackley. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Harry Harris, Commander, United States Pacific Fleet. Well, I'll never follow an eloquent man to the podium. Great speech, Secretary. So when I was having a cup of coffee this morning at that coffee shop right across the, the highway there, a very distinguished woman came up to me, very excited, and she said, wow, you must be Captain Hall. <laughs> well, what could I say but yes, ma'am, and welcome to the USS America, and ladies and gentlemen, a welcome to the USS America. So distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, sailors and Marines of America, good morning. And what a great Navy day as we gather together during San Francisco Fleet Week, just two days before our great Navy, before your great Navy celebrates our 239th birthday to commission our nation's newest warship, a great Navy day indeed. Now I've always found the citizens of the Bay Area to be such gracious hosts. And I'm honored to be here with you today to help celebrate this region's history of military service and maritime tradition as we commission this great ship, the United States Ship America. As I look around, I realize that there are so many distinguished guests that it would take a whole hour just to name them. So I won't. But I do want to acknowledge a few. Secretary Schultz, Secretary Mavis, Congressman Rogers and Amadai, Mayor Lee, Assistant Secretary Stackley, some of our industry partners, including Mr. Brian Kuchis, our engineers, including Mr. Frederick Hoffmeyer. You know, ladies and gentlemen, America builds great ships. And if you think about it for a moment, the last captain of this ship behind me is not yet born. Now that's a return on investment indeed. And of course, Mrs. Lynn Pace, the ship sponsor, Mrs. Tiffany Pace, the maid of honor, and I'm betting the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Pace, is somewhere here as well. Right, sir? Admiral Brown, Admiral Hilardes, Admiral McKay, General Berger, fellow flag and general officers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'd like to thank everyone on behalf of the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Greenert. I'd like to thank everyone involved in today's commissioning ceremony. We can't thank you enough for all the great work that you've done. It's important work, and it matters. I want to commend Captain Bob Hall and the entire crew of this great ship for their tremendous work through acceptance trials and then sailing around the Americas 
to arrive here in San Francisco for this, her big day. I had the pleasure to be aboard America during her recent port visit in Chile, and I'm proud to say that you all are living up to the ship's motto, prepared in peace or in war. That's important because we live in an uncertain world where conflict and crisis can arise at any time. And as our nation conducts a strategic rebalance to the Pacific, warships like the USS America and the magnificent sailors and Marines who man her will be needed now more than ever. Ladies and gentlemen, I love a microphone, and I could go on and on, but I won't, because our guest speaker, a man who speaks with, with much more eloquence, much more clarity, and much more gravitas than I ever could, he will address this more fully. So I have the easy job today. I get to introduce the guest speaker. But my challenge is to quickly convey to you the nature of the man who is the Secretary of the Navy without taking the easy way out and simply reading his bio. You can read his bio, and I encourage you to do so. But wait until he's finished speaking so you don't miss some important learning. So way back in the 8th century B.C., King Gordius of Phrygia tied his ox cart to a post using a complicated knot. This was a long time before auto locks, before the club, or before even car alarms. If you didn't want it stolen, you had to tie it down. Now, I bet you're all wondering where this is going. Now, this knot was so complex that it became legend that whoever could open Gordius's knot, the Gordian knot, would become king of all Asia. No need to get out the vote, no elections, just open a knot and congratulations, and it's good to be king. So a lot of people tried and a lot of people failed until about 500 years later, in 333 B.C., along comes Alexander the Great, who decided to give it a go. Now, oh, Alex worked it hard, but he couldn't untie it either. Finally, he realized he was going about it the old way. So he drew his sword, and with one bold stroke, he cut the Gordian knot, an innovative solution to a seemingly impossible problem. So what does cutting the Gordian knot have to do with our guest speaker? Well, let me tell you about it. Back in the 1980s, Secretary Mavis had a desire to help the people as him, uh, of his home state of Mississippi. Roll Tide, did I hear someone say? To his home state of Mississippi. He could have volunteered in a number of different ways, but he came up with a truly bold solution. And at age 39, he became the youngest governor of that state in 150 years. Unafraid to tackle the toughest challenges, he focused his efforts on growing the state economy, on improving education, and cutting through the many obstacles in his path. During the 1990s, he was appointed as the ambassador of Saudi Arabia, where he decided to help defuse a border crisis with Yemen. He dealt with terrorist attacks and international child abductions, some monumentally difficult problems that he sliced right through. And he's still cutting through barriers, bureaucracy, baloney, and BS. In these times of shrinking budgets, increasing fuel costs and higher carbon emissions, he's leading our Navy Marine Corps team and our nation, really, in energy reform. Thanks to his vision, we're using biofuels to demonstrate our great green fleet. We have energy-saving hydrogen propulsion systems like the one that drives the USS America behind me. And we're harnessing the power of the sun and wind to generate energy for our shore installations. He's solving complex problems as our nation rebalances to the Indo-Asia Pacific, as we continue to confront challenges in the Middle East. Now, while our nation's Navy is stretched a bit thin, we meet all our obligations around the world because he's unwilling to accept the usual paradigm of doing, of doing more with less. Instead, he's found a way to do more with more. If ever there was a modern-day modern Gordian knot, it's our acquisitions process. But because we, has, we have the right leaders at the helm, like Secretaries Mavis and Stackley, our Navy and Marine Corps team is upgrading technology 
developing unmanned systems, and growing our fleet to meet our global commitments. We have 65 ships currently under contract, and we will have a Navy of over 310 ships by the end of this decade. So expect to see a lot more ship commissionings like this one. Ladies and gentlemen, it's no exaggeration that our Navy and Marine Corps team is on the right course and speed because of our guest speaker, because of our Secretary's ability to find innovative solutions to the difficult problems of our time. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming a, a true visionary, the 75th Secretary of the Navy, Secretary Ray Mavis. Thank you, Harry Harris. One of the most amazingly good introductions I've ever had. I only wish two people were here, my mom and my dad. My father would have been very proud. My mother would have believed every word of it. Mr. Mayor, this great city, captain of the USS America, to our distinguished platform guests. And I want to take just a moment of personal privilege, as a couple of speakers have done, to recognize Secretary and Mrs. George Schultz, former Secretary of State, former head of protocol for the city of San Francisco, and maybe most importantly, Marine George Schultz. And I also want to recognize a couple more people. One is our former Deputy Secretary of Defense, Ashton Carter. Thank you for being here today. And my family, my wife Lynn, our daughters Annie and Kate. T today is my birthday. And I want to thank all of you for coming to celebrate with me. <laughs> My only question is, what do we do next year to top this? I couldn't be more honored, more pleased to be here with the magnificent sponsor of this magnificent ship, Lynn Pace, with Congressman Rogers, and I will die. With the people of San Francisco, with the shipbuilders of the USS America and the shipbuilders of America, and with all of you. This city, this area has been great friends, longtime supporters of our Navy and Marine Corps. We have a long and storied history. And to Lynn Pace, we have so few opportunities to recognize the deep contributions our military families make. So thank you for all you have done with your husband, General Pete Pace, over a very long career. And we look forward to more decades of service as your sponsor of America. Now, Lynn Pace, I have to tell you that Lynn Mavis is here today to pick up some tips on being a sponsor of a Big Deck Amphib because she is a sponsor of the next Big Deck Amphib, LHA-7, the Tripoli. E. And And Pete Pace, I'm here to pick up some tips on how to be a supportive spouse in these ceremonies. The United States Navy and the United States Marine Corps are so closely joined with this great nation that our founders enshrined the relationship in the Constitution. 
Our Constitution requires Congress to provide and maintain a Navy then as now. Our Navy and our Marine Corps uniquely provide presence around the world. We are where it matters, when it matters. And we provide that presence in peacetime no less than in wartime. Our sea services give our leaders options in times of crisis, no matter what those crises may be. Because we come from the sea, we do not take up an inch of any one sovereign territory. We carry everything that we need, and we can stay for a very, very long time. The commissioning of America is an extension of the American spirit. This ship, forged in a shipyard in my home state of Mississippi, with components and systems and parts manufactured all across this great country, is a symbol of the long and historic links between the citizens of this country and our Navy and Marine Corps who defend them. Having a ship named the America, sailing the world's oceans, defending freedom and peace, and helping those in need, as we have for more than two centuries, is crucial to America and to our Navy and Marine Corps. As Secretary Stackley said, the bit, this vessel that we commissioned today is the most advanced of its kind anywhere in the world. Its technology absolutely unmatched. From that fuel-saving hybrid drive to the advanced sensors and weapon systems to the Ospreys and the Joint Strike Fighters she will soon be carrying, American technological innovation and American manufacturing skill have always been some of our most powerful advantages. They are represented here in America by the thousands of shipyard workers who built her. Their dedication, their expertise, their incredibly hard work will fashion and has fashioned from steel and wire and electronics this premier platform that is America. And as Admiral Harry Harris said, we have to have these ships. Quantity becomes a quality all its own. And I am proud that we have arrested the slide in the size of our fleet and that we are growing that fleet to meet our global responsibilities, giving the namesake of this ship, America, what we need as a country to do what America does. The USS America will participate in missions all around the globe working with our partners and our friends, and creating new operational concepts. She'll serve our nation for decades across the wide expanses of the Pacific, on patrol, taking the name America around the world. I've had the privilege to be on America three times in the past few months. The first was in Huntington Ingalls, Pascagoula, when I was there for the keel laying of the Tripoli. The next time was when I joined her in the Straits of Magellan at the very southern tip of Chile. And the fact that the USS America went around the Americas going from Pascagoula to San Diego and to San Francisco showed the bond of these two great continents and the reception that this ship got. Her captain, her crew, her Marines was spectacular. 
Many times, the sailors and Marines aboard ships like America are the only Americans that people from outside this country will ever meet. And they are amazing representatives of our country. America will deploy with a Marine Expeditionary Unit aboard. Those Marines who embodied the long history of our Corps, that history written in blood and sacrifice and with an ethos of honor and courage and commitment that is always here, always around us. The epic battles and the roll call of Marine heroes are never far from our memories. The names of those battles, like searing poetry, echo down through the years and through the generations. Bellow Wood, Tarawa, Iwo Jima, Chosen, Huey. The Marines serving today are the rightful heirs to the Marines who preceded them. Their skill, their courage, their sacrifice, their warrior spirit are equal to those of any Marines who have ever served. The names of El Anbar and Helmut will be inscribed in that illustrious Marine history. Today, there are almost 40,000 Marines forward deployed in ships in the Pacific or on the shores of the Black Sea. They are joined by tens of thousands of our sailors in the world's oceans. They are there, far from home, far from family, standing the watch, doing everything from combat operations to special operations, to partnership building, to humanitarian assistance and disaster relief, and they are performing magnificently. If you ever become concerned about America, go talk to a young sailor or Marine. You will not be concerned anymore. And something that I'm reminded of and it is reinforced in me every day I serve as secretary is that although our technology gives us an edge, the heart of our Navy and Marine Corps, and the thing that gives us the greatest advantage are the skilled, the dedicated, the always courageous, always faithful United States sailor, United States Marine. Today, as you look around, in this crowd, you see the veterans who have served our nation in far flung places from the veteran of World War II's greatest generation to our current great generation. They join us here today to honor this ship and all she stands for. You'll also see sailors and Marines in uniform today. You'll see them today, but most of the time you don't see them because when they're doing their job, they're usually a long, long way from home. Today, USS America joins our away team. It is fitting and proper that when these sailors and Marines are home, when they're with us, when they're here, to remember them and to thank them. To thank them for giving us that presence. To thank them for the sacrifice that they and their families make every single day and to thank them for keeping us safe every day of the year. So now, now it's time to commission this great new ship to carry the name of our nation and to represent our values so the crew can take her to sea and defend this nation just as their predecessors have done for 239 years. We remain, as the Marine Corps motto says, Semper Fidelis, always faithful, and from the Navy, Semper Fortis, 
always courageous. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I would be honored, sir, if you would place America in commissioning. Will the guests please rise? Ship's Company, Hut 10. Hut. For the President of the United States, I hereby place United States ship America in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who shall sail in her. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Executive Officer, hoist the colors in the commissioning pennant. Aye, aye, Captain. Ladies and gentlemen, I direct your attention to the ship's mast as we hoist the colors and the commissioning pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors in the commissioning pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Will the guests please be seated? Captain, the colors and commissioning pennant are flying over United States ship America. Very well. I will now read my orders. From Commander, Naval Military Personnel Command, to Captain Robert Andrew Hall, Jr., United States Navy, subject Bupers Order Number 1433 of 20 February 2014, when directed by reporting senior detached in April 2014 from present duty and report to Free Commissioning Unit America as commanding officer. Upon commissioning of USS America, report for duty as commanding officer. Admiral Harris, United States Ship America is in commission and I am in command. Executive officer, set the first watch. Aye, aye, Captain. Officer of the deck, set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative and, while on watch, is responsible for the safe operation of the ship and her crew. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. We are pleased to have Rear Admiral Robert Beasel, United States Navy retired, the last commanding officer of the aircraft carrier USS America CP-66. He will pass the long glass to Lieutenant Commander Brian Cable, our ship's navigator and first officer of the deck. The Petty Officer of the Watch is Aviation Ordnanceman 2nd Class Courtney Powell of Kyleen, Texas. The Bosun's Mate of the Watch is Bosun's Mate 1st Class Nancy Romero of Los Angeles, California. And the Messenger of the Watch is Bosun's Mate 3rd Class Ronald Latimer of Flinch, Michigan. Very well. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. We're delighted to have our sponsor, Mrs. Lynn Pace, with us today. Lynn christened America in Pascagoula, Mississippi on October 20th, 2012. Lynn, I'd be honored if you join me and give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. Before I do that, there are two things I would like to do. I would like to acknowledge the families who are here in support of all those who Thank you. And I would like the men and women who serve on this ship to take my heart and my love with you 
as you sail. Ready? Yep. Officers and crew of the USS America, man our ship and bring her to life. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. We thank the Marines of 1st Marine Expeditionary Force, Camp Pendleton, for embarking our ship's initial landing force as USS America came to life.
Ladies and gentlemen, USS America salutes you. We are proud to serve in your Navy Marine Corps team. Ready? Two. Captain, the ship is manned and ready. Very well. Admiral Pons, USS America is manned and ready and reports for duty to the fleet. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, request permission to break your flag, sir. Executive Officer, break the flag of the Secretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, Captain. Quartermaster, break the flag of the Secretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the flag of the Secretary of the Navy is flying over USS America. Very well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Robert Hall, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, United States Ship America. Mrs. Lynn Pace, our wonderful sponsor, Secretary Mavis, former Secretary Schultz, Mayor Lee, Admiral Harris, Assistant Secretary Stackley, Lieutenant General Berger, Vice Admiral Hilarides, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, welcome aboard. This is, uh, you may think that commanding a warship this large is tough, but uh, while well, I'll tell you, talking in front of a crowd this large and this distinguished, I think it's a little bit more challenging, but fortunately for me, all the great speeches have already been done. Uh, thank you very much, Admiral Harris, Mr. Secretary, and everyone on the podium uh, for making my job a little easier, taking the pressure off. So all I have to do is really thank all those that, that helped me to get here today. First, of course, I want to thank God for the many blessings I've received in my life. Uh, whatever I'm doing, I just hope I continue to keep doing it. I want to thank Mayor Lee in the city of uh, San Francisco for welcoming us into your beautiful city, uh, which is richly steeped in naval tradition. Thank you, sir. I want to especially thank Rear Admiral Tom Brown uh, and the entire commissioning committee who've been working nonstop for over a year to ensure this commissioning was an event worthy of the name America and that the entire week was something the crew would remember for their lives. Thank you all so much for the time, dedication, and tireless effort you put into making this a great week. Thank you, Admiral Brown. Thank you. Of course, I need to thank the United States Navy, primarily for being a first-class organization uh, that I've been fortunate enough to be a part of for so long. Uh, and in particular, I want to thank them for assigning me to command this incredible warship and this extraordinary crew. If you know me at all, you'd know that uh, there's no greater honor for me than to be assigned commanding officer of the USS America. Because as uh, Johnny Cash puts it in his Song of the Patriot, I am a flag-waving patriotic nephew of my Uncle Sam. And Although it's the Navy's 239th birthday on Monday, uh, happy birthday, Navy. It's uh, the Secretary of the Navy's birthday today. Happy birthday, Mr. Secretary. You know, I feel like I'm the one getting the present here. This is just a great day for me. <laughs> of course, thank you. And, and it's wrapped in red, white, and blue, so that's pretty awesome. Of course, I can't uh, thank the Navy without also thanking the United States Marine Corps for everything they do for our country and for being extraordinary partners and teammates at sea in support of our nation's interests. Semper Fi. Thank you. So, to our incredible sponsor, Mrs. Lynn Pace, I want to personally thank you for providing the crew with a role model of exceptional determination and grace. You set the example for selfless service to our great country and your positive spirit and indomitable presence will surely stay with us and guide the ship on the right course throughout her service life. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. To the America Carrier Veterans Association, thank you all for your efforts to get another capital ship named America and for the extraordinary legacy that you and every one of the CV-66 sailors have left for me and my crew to live up to. They're very big shoes that we have to fill, but we are very much looking forward to the challenges. Thank you very much, all former USS America sailors. Thanks to our Navy partners, Captain Mercer, Captain Mitchell, Captain Toot, and the many outstanding men and women we've worked so closely with at Soup Ship and the program office. 
Your dedication, flexibility, and professionalism ensured the Navy Marine Corps received a ship ready for tasking. So thank you. Thank you. To our industry partners, on the hull of this warship should be a stamp that reads, Made in America. Thanks to Brian Cushis, George Jones, Randy Padgett, and all the great shipbuilders at Huntington Ingalls for the years of dedication, blood, sweat, and tears you poured into delivering a great ship and for making sure that Made in America stamp really meant something. Thank you, shipbuilders. Personally, I want to thank all my Navy and uh, hometown friends for making a trip to be here today. I was raised in a great neighborhood in a town called Billerica, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. And many, <laughs> you from Billerica? Come on. <laughs> uh, many of our, my, my, uh, my old neighbors are actually here today. I want to thank you all so much for coming, particularly my oldest friend Jack McGowan, his lovely wife Charlene, and their mother Jan. Thank you so much for being here. I've been blessed to come from a very large family. My dad, who unfortunately is no longer with us, uh, but I know he's definitely with us in spirit. He loved the Navy, told some great stories, and really encouraged me to give everything uh, my best effort. So thank you, Dad. To my mom, who is here today, uh, raised seven children, always doing whatever she could for us and never thinking about herself. Uh, she taught us the value of family, to always treat others with respect. She taught us to be compassionate, and she also taught us to be very competitive. It's, I think she's a saint myself. Thank you, Mom, for being here. Love you. Thank you. My brothers and sisters, who are my best friends, uh, are all incredible human beings. Laurie, Eric, Sarah, Bill, and Ellen, thank you all, and my nieces and nephews and in-laws for being here today and for being with me my entire life and all, for always being there. To my youngest brother, Ed, who we uh, lost to cancer, I'm thinking about you, brother. I know you're here with us today. Thank you. To my kids, although they're adults now, Andrew and Rebecca, you are the lights of my life. You think, just thinking about you both makes me smile even on my worst days. I'm so incredibly proud of the young men and women you've become, and I thank God every day for blessing me with you both. And I want to thank you for always being there for me, even though when I couldn't always be there for you. Don't cry, Beck. <laughs> now you got to tell me to To my beautiful wife, Casey, the second greatest decision I ever made is when I listened to you when you suggested I join the Navy. The greatest decision I ever made is when I decided to ask you to marry me. Throughout my career, you've been my rock. You picked me up, encouraged me to soar when I needed it, and you brought me back down to earth when I probably more often than not needed that also. Um, you've been a wonderful and caring mother to our children, hugely supportive wife. You've been a great signing board and advisor, and you've been my best friend since we've married nearly 26 years ago. And uh, although I'm going to miss another anniversary next week, because we'll be underway, I'm definitely looking forward to the next 26 years, honey. I love you, and thank you for all your support. Thank you. <laughs> to the crew of USS America, as plank owners, we've been granted the awesome responsibility and great privilege to set America out to sea on the right course. You've worked extremely hard thus far to get her to this point, performing extraordinarily on our maiden voyage around South America. And I thank you for that incredible effort, but I'll tell you, it's just the beginning. As a ship of the line, America will be called upon to defend our nation's values and interests around the world, and we must be prepared. I know you feel as honored as I do to be given this amazing opportunity, and I know, as Admiral Pons puts it, you have the pride, the patriotism, the professionalism, and the passion to succeed at whatever mission we're assigned, and I'm very proud to be serving with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Finally, we in the military get thanked often for our service to our country, and although it's truly an honor to serve, it's great to be appreciated for what we do. Well, the crew and I want to personally thank all of you here today for what you do in service to our nation. This ship, the USS America, was named after the greatest country on earth, but it's only the greatest country because it values everyone's contributions. The doctors, the accountants, the small business owners, the salesmen, the policemen, the teachers, the computer programmers, all professions, takes every one of us doing our part, working together, and dedicating ourselves to preserving the ideals of freedom and democracy that make this country great. And that's why we thank all of you for your service and for what you do to make America strong every day. So thank you all. Thank you. 
Now, Admiral Burke said, for in this modern world, the instruments of warfare are not solely for waging war. Far more importantly, they are the means for controlling peace. America's motto, Bello Bel Pace Paratus, translates to prepared in war or in peace. Carrying the latest in Marine Corps aviation and over 1,700 Marines, America will certainly have the capability to strike mightily in wartime, but as Admiral Burke said, perhaps more importantly, she'll also have the capability to be a significant deterrent in peacetime. There are great times ahead for America, our incredible country, and there are great times ahead for America, this awesome warship, and my crew and I are very much looking forward to and feel incredibly blessed to be a part of both. God bless America, our ship, and our country, and God bless all of you for being here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ship's company, attend hut. Will the guests please rise? Chaplain Johns will now lead us in the benediction. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for your presence among us during this time-honored ceremony. As we conclude, Lord, bless the USS America as she begins her service to our great nation. Make her a symbol of justice and freedom for all the world to see. May her nation look to her with pride and as a model of excellence and execution of every task. May she be a respected adversary in conflict, an effective deterrent to war, and a welcome means of compassionate assistance when needed. May the sailors and the Marines who serve on her strive to honor the legacy she represents. Thank you, Lord, for the dedication and the commitment of all who have participated in making the commissioning of the USS America a remarkable success. We celebrate this glorious day with deep gratitude. May we ever draw our strength and support from you, whose perfect love is our peace and whose peace is our power. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Chaplain Johns. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and please remain seated until our platform guests have departed the ceremony. <laughs>